Have you ever wondered if it is possible to write a program that self-destructs and while doing so creates a clone of itself to stay alive indefinitely? If not, don't worry, me neither. But in this video we are going to write a Python program that self-destructs, then creates a clone of itself and then runs this clone to stay alive indefinitely, which is a great exercise on code inspection, file IO and sub-processes. Welcome everybody, my name is Cons and I make videos on computer science, programming and everything in between. And if that sounds like something you are interested in, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any upload. We start off with a super simple Python program which takes a number that has been passed as a command line parameter, checks if that number was actually passed and then prints it back on the command line. In order to read the command line parameters we need the sys module, so we enter import sys and then to check if a command line parameter was passed we are going to access sys arc v with if len sys arc v which checks how many command line parameters have passed because all the command line parameters that are passed are in the list sys.argv and the command line parameter at position 0 is always the name of the program for us that is main.py. So now we want to check if no number was passed so we have to check if the amount of command line arguments is less than 2. And if that is the case, we're going to set a default value for number which is 0. So we enter number equals 0. And for the else case, we are just going to take the number that was passed as command line parameter at position 1. So we enter number and then int sys arg v at position 1. We need the int in order to convert everything that was passed into an int. We won't check if that actually is legal or not, we just make sure that we only pass integer values. And as a last step we're going to print the number, so we enter print f number and the number we have just entered. We save that and then we check our program python.main and we see if we pass no number as a command line parameter, number is 0 and if we enter a number, the number is 42 as we have just added it to the command. And don't forget I always write a written article on my website for each video I make here on YouTube so if you find it hard to follow the code make sure to check out the link down below to get the article for this video. The next step for our program is to get the source code of the program while it is running and for that we're going to use the python inspect module. In order to use it we enter import inspect and then down here when we have checked if our number was actually passed we enter code equals inspect get source and then inspect current frame. Inspect current frame returns the object that is currently executed by the Python interpreter. As we don't have any actual object, only our script that is running, it returns the whole script that is currently running. This object is then passed to inspect get source, which is a function which extracts the source code from the object we have just entered. So in order to check that we actually get the source code, we are also going to print the code on the command line and check it out over here. And as we can see, we see the source code now on the command line of the program we have just executed. Now that the source code of our program is stored in the code variable, we can use that variable to clone our program into a new file. And if you're new to Python File.io, check out this video up here where you can learn everything about reading and writing files in Python. And also check out my Gumroad shop where you can find a free cheat sheet for Python reading and writing files as a PNG or for 5 euros as a printable PDF. In our code we're going to replace print code with writing to a file, so we enter with open tempy we make sure that it is actually writable with w as file which gives us a handle for the file we are going to access and then we enter files.write code and if we run that program our code is then written into the file temp.py so let's check that out we run our code once more 
and we don't see the code on the command line because we have just written it into the file tempy. So let's open tempy and we can see it is a complete replica of our main.py. The next step is to delete or self-destruct our program before we clone it. So let's jump back into the code. Let's add a comment here, write source code to file, and then we are going to use the OS module, import OS, which allows us to run system commands. So we enter OS remove, and then the path to our file. And Python has a special dunder variable called dunder file, which points to the path of the currently running file. So we delete the file that is currently running, which is main.py. And then in order to actually clone it into main.py again, after we have deleted it, we're going to change temp to file in our write statement. So let's check out if that actually works. We enter our command again and nothing happened. And also when we head back into the editor, we can also see that the program is still there. Now that our Python program self-destructs and clones itself, the last piece that is missing is that we call the clone program from our original program. And for that, we're going to use two Python modules, which is Schlex and subprocesses. So first we are going to import Schlex. Schlex is used in this program to format our command that it is actually readable on the command line. And subprocess is used to call any command from a Python program on the command line. So the first piece we need is to create a command and the command should call the Python interpreter, then the path to the file we have just created with the cloning. And then we are going to increase the number we have passed to the original program by one. So we can see on the command line that the number increases, which means that a new version of the program was just launched. Then we need Schlex to format our command into a list, which we can then pass to sub process. So we enter command list and then Schlex split command, which turns our command into a list. Last but not least, we have to call sub process. So we enter p equals sub process command list. And we have to tell the Python interpreter that we want to start a new process rather than extending the existing one. So our program will run and call the clone program and this will spawn in a new process and our original program will end while the new program has started running. For that, we're going to enter start new session equals true. And with that, everything is done. We can head over to the command line, call our program, this time without any command line parameters. We press enter and we can see the number counts up, which means that our program successfully self-destructs, clones itself, and then calls the cloned program. I hope you enjoyed this silly programming idea. And if you have any ideas what I should do next, let me know down below in the comments and don't forget to comment with the computer emoji so I know you watched until the end. Check out all my other videos on Python on my channel. Make sure to give this video a like and I wish you a pleasant day and hope to see you soon.